Like with Hurricane Katrina, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico serves as a poignant reminder of how critical Louisiana's coastal wetlands are to our safety, economic viability, and cultural identity as we continue our path into the 21st century. While Louisiana's current coastal restoration funding streams originate from a variety of sources administered by the state, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and other federal task forces, like the Coastal Wetlands Planning Protection and Restoration Act, the billions of additional dollars that will be needed for large-scale coastal restoration depend largely on the Gulf of Mexico Energy Security Act, which was championed by Senator Mary Landrieu and former Senator Pete Domenici of New Mexico. Through this act, the four Gulf Coast oil and gas producing states started receiving dedicated funds in 2007 from federal oil and gas leases explicitly to support coastal conservation, restoration, and hurricane protection in those states. These funds could be in the hundreds of millions of dollars per year starting in 2017. There is great irony that in Louisiana we are depending on non-renewable fossil fuels for restoring our coast when it's these same energy sources that emit greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, which exacerbate our coast vulnerability due to the resultant increases in sea level rise and hurricane intensities fueled by the warmer Gulf waters. Some still disagree that greenhouse gases exacerbate sea level rise and hurricane intensity, but these facts are undeniable. First, our seas are rising. Second, our coast is sinking. Third, we are increasingly vulnerable to intense hurricanes because of our eroding coast. And fourth, our primary funding sources for coastal restoration and protection is based on a finite resource, namely oil and gas. Our nation's continued demand for domestic oil and gas supplies makes oil and gas one of Louisiana's most strategic economic assets and employers. However, as we continue to invest in oil and gas exploration off our coast, we should also be investing in promising technologies that create jobs now and can potentially help pay for restoration and protection of our coast in the future. In order to remain internationally competitive in the energy economy and ensure our energy security throughout the 21st century, the United States must dramatically increase our investments in renewable energy technology and capitalize on a variety of abundant renewable natural resources, including solar, wind, water, and biomass. With the world population forecast to grow from 6.7 billion to almost 10 billion people between now and 2050, the demand for renewable energy and fresh, clean water will increase dramatically. The Obama administration has acknowledged this market with more than $80 billion in clean energy investments and future clean energy jobs through the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. New Orleans is a city at the bottom of the Mississippi River Basin, the largest river basin on the continent. On average, almost a billion liters of water course through our city every minute, every day. However, this constant renewable water supply, which could be the envy of many parched places in the world, is something we typically take for granted or even view as a threat in terms of flooding. The port of New Orleans sees the Mississippi River in terms of commerce. The coastal restoration community sees it in terms of providing fresh water and sediment to promote coastal restoration. Now, we have an opportunity to see the river and its constant current as a source of renewable energy. Through the use of turbines and other hydrokinetic technologies placed in the river, we can capitalize on this abundance of water to produce an environmentally safe, renewable energy source that can complement our existing oil and gas industry and make New Orleans a hub for a new economy that actually benefits from our abundance of fresh water.